Hey 2 fans, I'm D21Beast and thanks for stopping by my channel. I wanted to kind of do a special sort of anniversary episode, I guess, or a vlog, a collection video, really whatever you want to call it, kind of commemorating the 15th anniversary of the release of the first movie, uh, X-Men in theaters. If you guys haven't been following Brian Singer on Twitter or any sort of the media that uh, 20th Century Fox has been putting out, July of 2000 was when the first X-Men film uh, came to theaters. And Brian Singer's kind of been touting that the release of the X-Men Rogue Cut, if you guys haven't seen this, definitely check it out, uh, was sort of a celebration, I guess, that's release date that was picked, was a celebration of the 15th anniversary of that movie in theaters. And that was certainly significant, I'm sure, for him and his career, but also for me as an X-Men fan, I thought that was pretty significant. Um, I'm somebody who, you know, I watched like the Adam West Batman cartoon growing up, the old Flash TV series, but I never really got into superheroes uh, until it was the uh, X-Men animated series that aired on Fox, you know, and I'd watch the Spider-Man cartoon, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Silver Surfer, uh, Avengers, all of the cartoons that aired on Fox around that, but it was really the X-Men animated series that actually had me develop sort of a love for comics or really just get invested in what uh, the comic book world had to offer. So um, as I'd watched the cartoon, you know, I kind of moved on to the comic books. I picked them up at a Walmart of all places. You can't even do that anymore. And of course, the Toy Biz line that was running at the time was definitely influential on building my interest in the X-Men cartoon. And when uh, the year 2000 came around, uh, that was the year I turned 15, I just lost my mind when I realized that an X-Men movie was coming. Uh, it was really big, uh, really exciting for me. Um, now, I didn't get to see the movie initially in, when it released in July, uh, but I did have a friend who took me for my birthday in August, and I'm always going to remember that. My parents, they never took me to the movie theater ever, really. I think maybe when Grandma came in town one time, we saw the Flintstones movie. Um, but really, we never went to the movies ever when I was a kid. So uh, this guy, Daniel, uh, if you have any chance of watching this, I haven't talked to you in 20 years. But, um, you know, he was the one who uh, took me for my birthday because he knew it was really important to me. And it was definitely a special moment for me to finally see these heroes that I, dare I say, been idolizing a little bit, but definitely a huge fan of on the silver screen. So um, throughout the years, I've collected X-Men memorabilia. And that's kind of one thing I want to do in this video is I just want to show you some of the stuff that I've got that kind of relates to the first X-Men film as we celebrate the 15th anniversary of really the film that I think uh, definitely informed and changed the way that we interpret or view or the way that the media uh, reacts to superhero films as a uh, as a cinematic piece, I guess. You know, uh, without the X-Men film that came out in 2000, we wouldn't have the Iron Man film or the Marvel Studios stuff. Uh, really, uh, probably DC to some extent owes credit to X-Men for making people take superheroes seriously again. So definitely a very important movie. And yes, Blade did come first, but X-Men's the one that had the first mainstream appeal. So I want to just do this video. Uh, I'm going to show you some cool stuff in my collection. I don't claim to have everything out there. I'm not a super collector, but I'm, I think I've got some pretty cool things to show off. So uh, we're going to go ahead and cut, and I'm going to show you some things that just kind of relate to the first X-Men film. And uh, I'm probably going to do a multi-part sort of video series here. Uh, we'll start with the first X-Men movie, and then um, we'll do some additional parts, and I'll show you some other stuff I've got for the other movies. So I hope you guys enjoy uh, what I'm about to show you, and uh, definitely leave comments below if you have any memories you want to share. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the stuff that I've got. All right, guys, so the first thing I want to show off I actually think is one of the more special things that I've got in my collection. I've got the issue of TV Guide that came out the week that the X-Men movie first came out in the year 2000. This TV Guide runs from July 15th to July 21st of 2000, and as you can see here, it does have Wolverine on the cover, and even touts that it has all the excitement, the action, the stars, the exclusives, and everything for this movie's mutant mania. So, it's a pretty cool book, I think. Uh, for us who grew up before the internet, or when the internet was still in its infancy, I mean, I was on America online back in the day, but this was really my first look at what uh, Wolverine was going to look like in the X-Men movie. And I've got to say, Hugh Jackman was not making the best Wolverine face, and I remembered that when I was a kid. Uh, looking at this magazine, I was like, wow, that's the guy they got? You know, I just, I couldn't believe that that was the look that they went with. And I think uh, Jackman's gotten much better at making the, the Wolverine face, if you will. So, uh, but this was our first look. I mean, this was pretty significant. And I must have read through this thing, at least the X-Men content, hundreds of times before I ever saw the movie. So let's go ahead and take a look inside this magazine. You can see here that uh, it does say that this is one of six covers, and as I flip open the inside cover of this book, you're going to see here at the bottom all the other covers that were available at that time. There were covers with Xavier on them, Cyclops, Jean, Storm, Wolverine, and then of course Rogue. So, uh, as we flip through the book here though, we can go ahead and get to the exclusive X-Men content. You see here, the X-Men cometh, and then over here you see the first look that really we got of Storm, Here's another look of Wolverine. Again, Hugh Jackman got much better at portraying what Wolverine was supposed to look like over the years, and he's still pretty small, too, comparatively to where he's at now. 
Uh, we've got our first look at Jean Grey, which I don't know that Jean Grey ever looked like that in the final version of the film. She, I think her hair was always in a ponytail. Uh, we have Cyclops here, which looks pretty unchanged from how he ended up in the movie. Uh, Rogue there, and then Xavier. And flipping the pages through. Uh, we've got a special little call out here for Chris Claremont, a longtime writer of the X-Men. And then as we flip through here, and I think that might be John Byrne up top. And as we flip through here, uh, we've got Sabretooth, our first look at him. And our first look at Mystique. And as we continue, we've got our first look at Toad and our first look at Magneto. And there's even a special sidebar here talking about the X-Men toys and other licensed products that came out at the time. So, And it's kind of funny, too. If you look at the, uh, the inset here, it actually calls this Jean Grey. Obviously, the Jean Grey X-Men movie toy calls her a doll, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, but then the next cool thing that they had in this was exclusive to this TV guide. I don't know if this has been reprinted anywhere else. And if it has, let me know, guys, in the comments where it was because I'd love to get it in trade form. But we have the uh, kind of an introduction comic here drawn by Salvador La Roca and written by Chris Claremont. These guys had not yet started doing Extreme X-Men together at this point, but I think they were about to. So it's pretty cool to see them paired up here, I think, for the first time. And then basically the point of this comic is very short. It only introduces you into the four X-Men members that were actually in the movie, Wolverine, Gene, Scott, and Storm. And there we go. So just uh, some pretty cool artwork. They're colored very nicely, actually. Um, and then let's see here. Get another page here, the introduction of Magneto. There's a nice shot of Wolverine. Definitely LaRocca artwork there as you look at it. And then the last page. All the X-Men stand together, and they're ready to take on their next challenge. So, uh, that's it. I mean, the rest of this is just stories and television listings of the day. We can see what came on at uh, 1230 um, on Sunday. Looks like we have Gunsmoke. Well, for any MeTV watchers, it's probably not a lot different these days. But anyway, so that's uh, what I think is one of the coolest things in my collection. My first look at the X-Men before I saw it in theaters. And uh, it's definitely something I've always held on to and probably continue to hold on to. It's just pre-internet days. I mean, this was the book, man. I mean, I just, I was constantly looking at this thing and just kind of imagining what the movie was going to be like. So I think that's a really cool piece. So the next thing I'd like to show off just really quickly here are these X-Men promotional movie buttons. These are actually the badges that theater uh, employees would wear when X-Men was actually in theaters. You can see here I've got a complete set. We've got Storm here, and it does list the name of the character, the name of the movie, and then the release date for the film. The back of these things just has, you know, your standard safety pin to kind of pin to your vest. Uh, but there we go. We have Storm. And then we've got Cyclops. I think actually that one looks pretty cool. We've got... Jean, we've got Professor X, we've got Rogue, she's got her in her hood there, we've got Wolverine, and then we have the Brotherhood. So we've got Magneto, and we've got Toad, I like how they put the yellow in the eye there, Sabretooth, now, for some reason, Sabretooth almost looks like it's some sort of photoshopped image. Not really just a photo of Tyler Mayne, but maybe some sort of concept art. And then we have Mystique. And again, a nice use of the yellow on the eye there. So, I think these buttons are really cool. Um, I didn't get these when the film originally released. I actually picked these up on eBay several years later. But I always remembered seeing them at the theaters and wanted to get a complete set. So I did, and now I have them to share with you guys. Let's move on to licensed video games. Now, anymore, licensed video games are either mobile games or console games that don't really review that well. This is from a different era. This was the beginning of the golden age of Activision Marvel games, which sadly came to an end not too long ago. Uh, but what we have here is X-Men Mutant Academy, which was actually available the same week that X-Men was in theaters. You can see here it does advertise you get a free uh, ticket to the movie inside. And then we have its sequel, which was released in 2001, X-Men Mutant Academy 2. And then we even have the Game Boy uh, game, the version of X-Men Mutant Academy. So what is X-Men Mutant Academy? It's actually a fighting game, a 2D fighting back when uh, the Capcom games were really in vogue and everyone was playing 2D fighters in the arcade, Activision uh, had Paradox, a company that I don't even think exists anymore, design some 3D, 2D fighters, and they were actually really solid. Granted, they could use a few balance patches today, but really, these were really great games. So let's start by looking at the box art here for the first game. You can see here that there are CG animated X-Men on the cover, and for a PlayStation 1 game, that was actually pretty surprising that uh, there was that much you know, video quality or render quality put into a video game. Now, these aren't in-game character models. These are the cutscene models. But it still looks pretty good, I think, for a PlayStation 1 era. As you open it up here, you can see that the disc is pretty plain. It just has the X logo here. It does advertise the movie on the back of the booklet. Underneath the disc, you've just got the X-Men logo. And then on the back of this uh, box here, you can see some screenshots of what the game looked like in action. It does look a little blocky, but really, this is a pretty solid fighter and actually worked very, very well. This is one of my favorite fighting games for the longest time, so I was really glad to have this as part of my collection. 
and this was a PlayStation 1 exclusive if you're not counting the Game Boy version of the game, which is right here. Now, a fighting game on Game Boy, you've got to think, is probably pretty simple, and honestly, for the most part, it was. This was just a game where you could almost corner anybody at one point and just start hitting the punch button and winning, but I just wanted to show you really quick what this game actually looked like, so let me get my Game Boy out here. And for those of you who are younger, uh, gaming system didn't used to have backlit screens, so this is definitely going to be kind of a trip. You're going to have to kind of deal with reflections in the screen, unfortunately, while I show you this. But as you can see here, it starts up. Uh, you've got your developers here, and then we've got the screen of all the characters that are playable in the game. And there's actually two that aren't featured there. And when I was doing this uh, video, I knew I wanted to get the Game Boy out so I could show you how this game works. Uh, just to show you how much I played this game, when I pull out the battery hatch, I actually have the codes still in the back here to unlock Apocalypse and Phoenix as playable characters. Uh, both of those characters essentially made you god mode. Their life was so huge and their damage was so big, but uh, still pretty cool. I think that uh, that's in this Game Boy all these years later. I was really kind of surprised to still see that there. But as far as the game works, you know, you've got your cutscenes and everything, and you can select anybody you want. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick Storm, I guess. And you have, you know, Xavier giving your mission. There's no actual text or spoken dialogue in this game. Of course, it is just a Game Boy game. But then you can see here as we get into the game, no actual loading screens. You can just punch through everything. You basically just go up against your opponent and just kind of mash the A button. You can jump. You can kick. So uh, moves vary by characters. And then there's actually a rage meter that fills up so you can hit both buttons at the same time eventually and uh, do a kind of a super attack. So that's that game. Uh, interestingly, the background of this particular stage is actually modeled after a stage that was uh, present in the PlayStation 1 version of the game. So there was a bit of connectivity there. And another thing I forgot to mention about this game is on PlayStation, you actually had unlockable costumes uh, for the first X-Men movie. And that's why I mentioned this game at all. Aside from the ticket inclusion and the fact that it came out the same week, this game actually featured costumes that showed the characters as they looked in the first X-Men movie. So that was pretty cool. Um, I had never really seen anything like that as a kid. And uh, thought it was a nice sort of inclusion to have with the game. And then in 2001, we did get the sequel. Uh, the sequel kind of moved further away from the movie tie-ins. It did have more characters in it. Uh, you can see here, um, they still use that same sort of X design. On the inside here, you can see you have still got codes to unlock everything. Um, but then on the back here, you can kind of see, kind of see what this game looked like as well. Uh, the graphics did improve marginally, and the uh, fighting mechanics were definitely beefed up a little bit. But still, a really fun game and a great tie-in, I think, uh, to the first X-Men film. So these are great games. Uh, they're probably hard to find on the secondary market at this point just because I don't know what the print run was for either one of these. But if you can find a copy of this game, definitely check it out. It's a lot of fun. And finally, we must of course talk about the home video version of this film. So I believe X-Men released on home video around November-ish uh, of 2000. I can't remember exactly, but I do remember that I got the X-Men VHS for Christmas, which I was wanting. It was the only thing on my list that I was going to die if I didn't have. And yeah, this movie is so old that it's available on VHS. So for anybody who's uh, younger than me, frankly, uh, this was the original way that uh, you bought movies before they were on DVD or uh, digital demand. So, you know, there was beta and stuff before that, but this is uh, sort of an older format. And it's really the only VHS. VHS I've kept over the years. You can see here it does say X-Men on the side and has an image of Patrick Stewart. On the other side you've got an image of Hugh Jackman. And of course this whole thing is foiled out. Uh, this actual poster I believe is the teaser poster for the first X-Men film. Uh, just kind of reduplicated here or on the box for the movie. And on the back here we have some images of the actual heroes. Uh, again those are promotional images. I don't think any of those were actually taken from the film except for maybe that one. But um, And maybe the Sabretooth Scream too. But I definitely know the Cyclops is promotional and, and a few other ones we saw. Like on the buttons I think some of those are reused from that. And uh, what's interesting about this VHS is that it was coming out during, you know, the turn of the millennium. DVD was starting to come out. I didn't have a DVD player yet, but if you had the VHS copy of the movie, it actually tells you on the back here um, that there's 10 minutes of never-before-seen footage. All you have to do is wait for the film to keep playing all the way through the end of the credits. You then get to a fake DVD menu, and it shows a bunch of options, and instead of you being able to click them, it just starts playing them one after the other until each one's done. So I did actually get some of the DVD special uh, features, not all of them, but some of them with the VHS copy of this movie. So I thought that was pretty cool back in the day. But then, once I got a DVD player, the first thing I did was hunt down a copy of X-Men on DVD. And man, times have certainly changed. You can see here we've got a foil box. Again, it's that same sort of image we saw in the VHS copy. Uh, repeated imagery on the back here, but man, you don't see DVD or Blu-ray cases really like this anymore. As we slide it out here, we have a nice sort of silver insert. And then as you open it, and I'll show you the back here, it's just got the X logo on both sides. As you open it, you've got more promotional images for the X-Men. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, I still think that this is, you know, it, it probably hasn't aged as well as it could have, but um, I, I definitely think it's a cool box every time I open it. It just kind of reminds myself of how cool and how special owning a DVD of something used to be back in the day. So that's really awesome. And 
definitely uh, you cannot buy the film like this anymore. Anytime they release the movie now, it's got a sort of bland cover. Really, I think anymore if you get on DVD, it's got something even less cool than that. Uh, but you don't get that sort of gatefold open box with the inserts or anything like that. So I definitely think that's awesome. Now around the time that uh, X-Men 2 was coming out in theaters, they did release X-Men 1.5. Basically, they restored the deleted scenes from the first movie into the second one. We got a little more with Iceman that we didn't get the first time, and I I think that's all that I really remember being significant about this movie. But then, uh, as you can see here, you can open this up as well. It has a special insert. Oh, and let me show you the back of this box. Uh, you see here, X-Men 1.5 on the front, and then on the back, we just have some images. Uh, no description of the movie, because they figure you already know what you're getting into. But then, uh, we have another sort of gatefold opening here. The future is here. And we have some nice uh, promotional images here. And then, as you open it up, we've got disc 1 and disc 2. And then, we've even got an insert here. Let's go ahead and open that up. And you have, oh yeah, just a description of who all the different characters are in the movie and all screenshots taken from the movie. So that's pretty cool. Um, X-Men 1.5 I don't think is definitely like an essential version of the movie. You don't have to scour and find it if you don't want to. Honestly, on the Blu-ray, they might even include this now as part of the standard packaging. I haven't looked into this set here, but uh, it was just kind of cool to get the extra deleted scenes integrated back into the movie. So that's really what the point of that was. Make a little extra money once uh, X-Men... Uh, X2, rather, X-Men United was in theaters. And finally, we have this. Now, the reason I own this on Blu-ray is because I'm an X-Men fan first and foremost, but I also got a free ticket to uh, Days of Future Past by buying this at Target uh, a couple years ago. And now, this has a two-disc format. There's no insert anymore. You can see that the disc here, I should have flipped these around before I started filming. Uh, we have the X-Men on the main feature, I believe, and then the villains on the special features. And then on the back here, it does just sort of list everything that is part of this movie. So, this is... Not every single format, but most of the formats available to purchase X-Men. I think between this release and the DVD that came out with it, there was a second release of the X-Men movie with this cover on it, but it wasn't foil, and uh, I think it was just a single disc. And We might have even gotten one more version of the movie between uh, the second edition of this and the uh, DVD that came out alongside the Blu-ray. So. But there's all the home video releases. Mostly I've got these for uh, sentimentality or just to say that I've got different formats of the movie, but I think it's cool to see how the box art kind of changes as the movie gets re-released, both in size and design. All right, X-Fans, so there's my collection of everything specifically pertaining to the first release of the X-Men movie. Sadly, I don't have any of the action figures that were available when the first movie was in theaters. A uh, different time in my life. I uh, wasn't as fortunate. I didn't really collect toys back then. It's probably why I do it so much now. I didn't have the means back then to do that. So, But I did, over the years, I've collected the badges. I've gotten the different formats of the movies. I've gotten... You know, just several different items and trinkets for each of the X-Men films. And I definitely wanted to do a video kind of showing you what I've got. And just kind of express my uh, love, I guess, for the X-Men franchise as a whole. And just celebrate the 15th anniversary of the first film. I'll certainly be doing more videos if you guys are interested. Uh, next up will be X-Men 2, of course, and The Last Stand. And we'll move along chronologically with the release of each movie. So, I hope you enjoyed what you guys saw here. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this and kind of relive my X-Men memories with me. Uh, if you like what you saw here, please feel free to rate, share, and subscribe. Also, be sure to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at D21Beast. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.